Hi, I'm Peter Birch and today here at Criticam we're going to be looking at three of my favourite monitors, that's right, three favourite monitors today, all thanks to my friends at Smart Hope. Make sure you get on board and check this out. Welcome to Criticam. So the main important thing when we're dealing with some of these monitors is cage design. So the cage design needs to replicate what these guys typically need in nature. So therefore, if we've got cages that are allowing for uh, semi-arboreal animals to climb, we've fulfilled that niche. If we've got animals that typically are a burrowing species, live typically more terrestrial, then we need a flat, low type cage, and a cage that allows animals to dig and bask. And if we're looking at semi-arboreal and semi-aquatic species, we need to bring those sort of attributes into the design as well. So, you know, we're looking at longer cages, or vertical high cages, as well as longer horizontal cages. So it all comes back to the design to make sure that these animals can live strong and healthy lives. Now, we're also going to take into account that some of these monitors have very high preferred body temperatures. So we're looking at higher body temperatures, so 55, 65 degrees for some of these guys, but we also need to take into the account that they also need high exposure to high output UV lights. So there's so many things we need to take into consideration, not just something that we really cool and we really like, or particularly, you know, we might be able to use it to get some likes. That's not always what it's about. It's about what really is the great design for a cage for an animal and looking after those animals to the best of their abilities cool little monitors that I'm working with is this guy here, uh, commonly known as the Gillens monitor, but in this house we call him Fingers. So, and hopefully Fingers doesn't react in the way that he usually does. So Fingers here is a, is a, is a pretty cool looking little Gillens monitor, and we're just going to sort of let him climb around and do his thing and make himself feel a little bit comfortable. Now the reason why he's called Fingers is because he always likes to get his little pound of flesh, which typically happens to be my fingers as such. So we don't want that to happen right now, but anything could go wrong. Now Gillen's monitors are pretty awesome. These guys are a, a more of a, an arboreal sort of species monitor, inhabiting sort of some of the outbook, ah, outback brushlands areas. They typically like to inhabit certain tree species where they get in there amongst the hollow logs. And, um, Hopefully he behaves himself and doesn't want to take a piece of me out. Now these guys are, so this is an adult size Gillens. They don't grow very big at all. They're one of the small pygmy species of monitors here in Australia. Very, very popular as pets. I mean, these small monitors can be kept in small enclosures. You can maintain those temperatures and environments correctly. And these guys will absolutely thrive in captivity. So one of the cool species of lizards that I love and currently am working with is these guys here. The water monitors, that's right. These are what we call the Merton's water monitors here in Australia. Unlike the Asian water monitors who do grow quite large, these guys only get to about three and a half feet, which is around about a metre. And you can see this little fella here is not feeling the most comfortable outside of his cage. So these guys are typically a semi-aquatic species. We're gonna just put him back into his cage here. Look at that. So yes, they're a semi-aquatic species, which means they like they feel as comfortable on the land as they do on the water. Now they've got a very nice, long, thin, keel-like tail, which helps them to whip through the water there and get a lot of traction. These guys are absolutely amazing animals, eating a cool variety of food, not only including, you know, things like mammals, birds, but they also like crustaceans, so they eat yabbies, they eat crayfish, which are the yabbies, uh, freshwater crayfish. Uh, they also eat crabs, and fish and other cool stuff. So basically they'll eat just about anything, even small mollusks. So we're talking things like uh, aquatic snails. They'll eat the aquatic snails as well. They are absolutely amazing animals. And I tell you what, they're cheeky little buggers too. And here we are with the last animal today, which is a Spencer's monitor, an absolute gorgeous creature, which inhabits the uh, black soil plains. Basically these guys live in rock crevices and when large rainfalls come through and flush out all sorts of other animals that are hiding in these rock cre or dirt crevices, I should put it, um, these guys will come through and start zapping them or eating them up. They're a very quick moving, very strong, powerful digging animal, very big arms, and they've got like a club-like tail. And just like all monitors, they shed in chunks and pieces, just like this, that's right. They shed in chunks and pieces. They've got these beautiful bands. Some of them are spotted or blotched. But this particular one 
is not. It's got very nice big bands. Now, like I said, these guys are an absolute awesome lizard. They're, a, a, I guess, around about a medium size monitor compared to some of our other monitors. These guys grow to about the same size as the Mertens, around about three feet. And at that size, they're quite uh, an animal to be dealt with. Now, typically they don't really bite too much like most of Australian monitors, but these guys prefer to use this tail and that tail is, um, as you can see, it's slightly ridged, it's slightly lumped. It's like a big thumping club. Now when they smack you in the face, it can actually make you see some stars if you're a decent sized lizard. They'll knock you around a fair bit. Now these guys will eat just about anything we feed them. They'll eat chickens, they'll eat mice, they'll eat rats. And you know, if you want, you can give them some other processed foods as well. It's absolute cool animals. And the real thing that I like to see is these animals not overfed. Now it becomes very dangerous when we overfeed our animals. Probably sometimes a little bit more dangerous than underfeeding is overfeeding, especially some of these monitors. They're an animal that's built to feast and famine, so when the food's good, they'll get out there and gobble it up, and when it's not, it's not. And this particular lizard here hasn't eaten in the last two months. She's just basically gone to bed and she's just starting to wake up now. So we're starting to get warm here in Australia. And I hope you guys have enjoyed looking and learning about her today now thank you very much guys for watching make sure you follow me on facebook instagram and twitter and thank you so much for supporting critter cam until next time guys cheers